The most successful people in the world understand the power of environment and immersion. Getting deep, putting it in motion. Using all your senses and directing all your senses towards your vision, towards your goal, towards what you want to be, towards your growth. It doesn't really matter what the goal is, right? But you got to see it, hear it, smell it, feel it. Something that you can reach out and touch. So I'll give you an example, okay? Because I can testify that this level of immersion that I'm about to get into, that I'm about to explain, I've seen it in other people. They've explained it to me. I've experienced it myself. And it works like clockwork. It works every single time. It's like magic. Universal law. Now, I've been vegan for three years now. But before I went through my transition, and I went through a little bit of an identity shift, before that, I was in between 185 and 190 pounds. I was at the heaviest I've ever been. The most muscular I've ever been. Strongest I've ever been. Now, mind you, before I started the journey of weightlifting, building muscle and all of that, going through a physique transformation, developing real grown man strength, I was around 145 pounds, right? Barely that. Put a few years of work in. Up until the present day, or three years ago, where I reached that 190. It's crazy. To the point where shopping for clothes was inconvenient and weird, right? Ripping pants and suit jackets and stuff from having wide lats and a small waist. Small waist and big glutes. <laughs> but I got to this point, and the goal was to be strong, jacked put on size, right? Pushing back against the experience and the identity of being skinny, of being weak, right? And I made it to this point because I crafted a lifestyle and an environment that was conducive to reaching that goal. So I was doing a few things. I was working in and out of gyms, working in multiple gyms. Wake up, nearly three o'clock in the morning, and get dressed and go to the gym, train clients, and train myself in between sessions. And if I wasn't training somebody, I was training myself. If I wasn't training myself or training anybody, I was eating with people who shared a common goal. I was eating with clients or eating with other trainers. Eating with people who were after the same goals, who wanted that physique transformation who weren't trainers or clients. We were eating in alignment for the same goals. So we, did, we would eat a lot of the same stuff. We were familiar with each other's lifestyle. We were in agreement. Now, if I wasn't home, if I wasn't at work doing that, I was at home watching powerlifting videos on YouTube, watching the CrossFit games on YouTube, watching powerlifting and bodybuilding documentaries on Netflix. I was watching Pump and Iron. I was following Cal Strength on YouTube. <clears throat> I was reading research on strength training, hypertrophy, muscle development. Watching, watching videos on rehab and doing research and reading on rehab and, in, and injury recovery and all these different kinds of things. Immersed, everything was revolved around becoming better at my craft. I was listening to motivational speakers, Tony Robbins, Eric Thomas, Les Brown, and various others. And I would eat for the goal while watching these things and reading these things. It was to the point where if I had to use the bathroom and I got some time to really sit on the toilet, let loose, I'd be on my phone reading stuff in relation to the goal while I'm sitting on the jaw. Right? 
Some may say, wow, that's, that's, that's obsessive, or it's extremely dedicated. What it is is immersion. It's creating an environment, a portable environment, right? Because the thing is, is that when I say environment, I don't mean a particular place, right? When I say environment, I mean up here. A mental and emotional environment. And I did this for a period of years. And the growth is fascinating. It's very empowering. <clears throat> and I came a long way and I learned a tremendous amount. It made me so much of a better person. But I wouldn't have been able to achieve it if I wouldn't have been that immersed, if I wouldn't have been that committed to the lifestyle. Now, for yourself, you may be thinking, well, I'm a middle school teacher. Sure, I want a body transformation. I want to be a better person. I want to think with more clarity, all these different types of things. I want to go through the self-development. But I can't be at school in the classroom teaching kids and watching powerlifting videos. I teach social studies or earth science. Something along those lines, right? And that's fine, right? Because you don't necessarily have to do what I did and work in a gym if you want to create a body transformation. But in your downtime, what are you doing? In your downtime, what are you watching? What are you reading? And I understand that when you're inside the classroom, you got to teach the kids. And when you're outside the classroom, maybe you got to be grading papers and stuff. And that's fine. Commit to your acts of service. But aside from work, what else are you doing? What are you eating? Who are you listening to? Who are your friends? Who do you go out to eat with? How are you spending your weekends? Take a long, hard look at your friends. Let's say you got a weight problem. You've been big your whole entire life. Look at your friends. Are your friends big? Are they comfortable with it? Do they eat like they're comfortable with it? If you want to be more disciplined as a person, are you hanging out with people who are not disciplined? Are you living with people who are not disciplined? If everybody's got their feet up and they're on the couch watching some stuff that produces zero growth, are you right there with them? What are you doing? Because with people like that, if you're surrounded by people like that, the best thing I can tell you at this point, it's time to leave the room. It's time to respectfully bow out, <laughs> right? Because you want to be around people who want to be in that same environment. You want to be around people who understand what it takes to do what you want to do. Self-development is a very difficult thing. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to stay consistent with, right? Because it's very easy to slack on. We have, we live in a society with endless amounts of distractions. Self-development is hard. It takes introspection. It takes a high level of self-awareness and diligence with developing self-awareness. It's a constant thing that you got to be immersed in. I'm serious. It's not a part-time thing. You got to be full-time. You got to be full-time. And I give you an example of why that is. My example would be the military. How is it that someone who is undisciplined and lazy, enters the military that way and comes out another. They go in one way, they come out another. They go in, yo, what's up, sorry I'm late. And they come out, yes sir, thank you ma'am. And they're on time, they're disciplined, they're organized. Back straight, posture, standing at attention, eye contact different haircut, <laughs> right? When I was really truly on it and I was at that 185, 190 point, at my strongest, people would ask me all the time, hey, you, were you in the military? Were you in the Marines? People would ask me this all the time, I didn't know why. Same mindset, same environment. But when you go into the Marines, it's not just, or Navy or whatever you decide to join, right? It's not just because the training was intense and that's why they came out that way. It's not just because, you know, the drill sergeants and the authorities were up your ass and that's why you came out to be that way. No. It's the environment in general. It's the whole, all-encompassing environment. Right? 
Because when you enlist, it's not like you just go there and you do your business for eight hours a day and go back home. No, you're, you're, that's just where you are now. That's your environment now. And you're surrounded with people and everyone has the same agenda. Everyone has the same culture. Everybody has the same vision. Everybody may have en enlisted for different reasons, but you gotta share a common goal. And there's a culture built around that. And a big part of immersion and environment is culture. You gotta have a culture of winning, a culture of discipline, a culture of success, a culture of ambition. These are not just words. This is a this is a this is a this is a a, a part of the thread and the fabric of that culture. It's a part of the fabric of, of who you have to be, the culture that you have to adopt to. Adapt to. Right? Environment is not a place, it's a mindset. Yeah, I, I would watch documentaries on, you know, what people go through in the military, what the training takes. What does it take to be a Navy SEAL? The training they go through, it's, it's no joke. When you gotta be neck deep in freezing cold water in the dark at nighttime, and you gotta, you just gotta be in it for, for long hours. Maintain your body temperature, your breathing, and everything. And you gotta chill there until the sun comes up. That ain't a great environment to be in. It's very uncomfortable. So how do you make it through without snapping? How do those conditions not break them? It's because the environment is up here. I'm not just making this up, okay? If they discovered this long before me, I'm just an observer. I'm just passing along the message, it works. Create that environment up here. Get immersed in the things that align directly with what you want to be. Anything that's not feeding your growth, it's got to go. You don't have a use for it. If it's not growing you, it's got to go. You got to swap it out for something else. Everything's like a diet. What are you putting on your plate on a daily basis?